Hey guys, this is Doug with Honest Science, and this is copper. It's entirely, almost entirely irrelevant to what I'm doing right now, but it's super cool, and I thought I would share it. It's not the copper. Okay, anyway, this video is going to be about deriving Euler's formula from cosine and sine. And it's really straightforward. If you remember how to do a Taylor series from calculus, you'll be able to do this really easily. If not, I'm going to show you how anyway, really quick. So this should be a really cool thing, and it's a very useful thing in math. So remember, Taylor series looks like this. So I'm going to say T for Taylor series of some function, some function of x evaluated at a certain point, say x naught. That's going to be a sum from n equals 0 to infinity, so it's a whole bunch of infinite terms of the nth derivative of the function at the point of interest x naught divided by n factorial times x minus x naught point to the nth power. So there's a little much it seems that goes into it, but that's really it. That's just a Taylor series. So if you've learned that already, great. If you haven't, that's what it looks like. You just take successive derivatives of a function, first derivative, second derivative, third derivative, fourth derivative, and then you multiply by, say, x minus x naught to the first, x minus x naught to the second, etc., divided by one factorial, two factorial, yada, 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 yada. And you can approximate a function, or in this case, get an exact function if the series is infinite. Yes, okay, that's Taylor series. Now we're going to derive Euler's formula, which looks like this. Really straightforward. It says that the exponential to the i x is equal to cosine x plus i sine x. Remember, i is this. It's the quote unquote imaginary numbers for negative 1. And so this is an equality that we can show from Taylor series. So, first, let's talk with the Taylor series of cosine. Really straightforward. We're going to say that Taylor series of cosine of x evaluated at point 0 for simplicity right on the origin. It's going to be the first term, the zeroth derivative of the, of the function, which is the function, at point zero times x minus zero to the zero, which is one. So times one divided by zero factorial, which is also one. So that's just cosine of zero. Next term is the first derivative, n zero, now we're on x, or er, uh, n one. First derivative of cosine is the minus sign at 0, and then we want x minus 0 to the first power, x to the first power, divided by 1 factorial, which is 1. There's our second term, which is from the first derivative. So now our third term, which is from the second derivative, going in our sum. So the second derivative now is minus cosine, going to be at 0 x minus 0 to the second power, to the second power, over 2 factorial, which is just 2. Now the, the fourth term in sequence from the third derivative is going to be plus sine at 0. And we have x cubed over 3 factorial, and you can see where this is going. Now we have plus cosine at 0 x to the fourth over four factorial, and the pattern goes on and on and on. So the important thing you notice from this whole thing, from this whole um, Taylor series that we have now, is that the sine of zero terms are obviously zero. So real quick, for, for memory's sake, I'll draw a sine and cosine. Here's our Cartesian two-dimensional graph, and here is sine starts at zero and looks like that. There's our sine, and our cosine starts at 1 and goes like that. Okay. So if we're looking at the sine at 0, of course, well, that's 0. It's right on the axis. That's what the function's value is at 0. So we don't care about the sine of 0 terms. All we're interested in is the, cos the cosine of 0 terms. And we remember that cosine of 0 is 1. So that simplifies much more. Now we end up with 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial 
plus x to the 4 over 4 factorial minus x to the 6 over 6 factorial, and it goes on and on and on and on, as you might imagine. That is the cosine of x uh, that we've derived from the Taylor series. Now let's look at the sine of x, because if, if Euler's formula is correct, that's what it's going to look like with the sine in it. So let's do, let's do the Taylor series of sine now. It's going to be really similar at the point zero. So here we now have the zeroth, the zeroth derivative, which is the sine of x, and our point is zero. Again, it's times one, which is x to the zero, divided by zero factorial, which is one. So there's that. Next term is the derivative of the sine, which is the cosine at zero, times x to the one over one factorial. Moving on, we have minus sine at zero, x squared over two factorial. And moving on, we have minus cosine at zero, x to the third, three factorial. Moving on, we have plus sine at zero, x to the fourth over four factorial. And it goes on and on and on, right? Once again, we see that the sine at zero is zero. So those that go away and we can ignore them, likewise with that one. And so the Taylor series of sine of x ends up being cosine of zero is one, so you have x over one minus x cubed over three factorial, and you get a plus x to the fifth over five minus x to the seventh over seven, and as you can imagine, it goes on and on forever like that. So these, if you notice, these terms are being divided by larger and larger numbers because a factorial goes up much faster than a power goes up. And so uh, these, these contributions are smaller and smaller. So this, you can have a really good approximation to the function with the first few terms and the, the rest become quite trivial. Nonetheless, since they're so similar, we're going to be able to use this pretty easily. Okay. So we've got our cosine function defined right here. Boom. We've got our sine function also defined right here. Boom. And now let's look at cosine plus i times sine. Right? Pretty straightforward. If we want to look at i sine, we just put an i on all these terms. i, 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 and i, and i, and i. Now, if we add these together, we end up with a new series which combines this one with this one. We get that cosine x plus i sine x is going to be 1 plus i x minus x squared over 2 factorial minus i x cubed over 3 factorial. And the pattern continues on and on, much like that. Da, da, da. That is cosine x plus i sine x. That's what it looks like. Now let's compare and see if that is indeed what e to the i x will look like. So that's just the last step. All we need to do is compare and see if that's exactly the same. If it is, this holds true. Okay guys, so now we have finished defining cosine x plus i sine x. Now let's do one more third Taylor series on this function and see if it matches what we already have. And we will not have done a thorough theoretical proof, but we, have, we, have, we will have proven that it is indeed equal to e to the ix. So the Taylor series of e to the ix evaluated at zero. It's going to be really straightforward because you know how to do a derivative of e to the ix. All right, so the zero derivative is just the function itself, of course. Remember, we're evaluating at zero, so we have that. And of course, it's times x to the 0 divided by 0 factorial, which is that. Our next term is the first derivative, which looks like this. First derivative of e to the ix is i e to the ix. If you don't know that, I'll review a little bit of calculus, but that's what it looks like. Um, that is our first derivative times x to the first power divided by 1 factorial. Right? Now we have the second derivative, which ends up pulling out another i, 
So that's I squared, which is negative 1. Negative 1 e to the i x. We add x to the second over 2 factorial. And I, I didn't remember that we're evaluating at 0, so sorry about that. That and that. Okay. So now we have the next derivative, which is going to be minus i e to the i evaluated at 0, x cubed over 3 factorial. The next term is going to pull out another i, so we'll end up with a positive e to the i at 0, x to the 4 over 4 factorial. And let's do a couple more just to make it really clear. Next derivative will be plus i e to the i evaluated at 0, x to the 5 over 5 factorial. And then the sixth term in sequence will be pulling out an i negative e to the i at 0, x to the 6 over 6 factorial, and so and so and so forth. So finally, let's just evaluate these. Well, every single e to the 0, e to the 0, e to the 0, anything to the 0 is 1. So those terms just become 1 and 1. 1, 1, 1, all day long. And so what we end up with here is a series that looks like this. 1 plus ix minus x squared over 2 factorial minus i x cubed over 3 factorial. I'm just tracing it out, drawing it in the line. Plus x to the 4 over 4 factorial plus i x to the 5 5 factorial minus 6 to the 6 over 6 factorial, and it goes on like that in a pattern. So the question remaining is, does what I just wrote, the Taylor series expansion for e to the ix with the infinite sum, look like the Taylor series, series expansion that we just did, cosine x plus i sine x? And if you look at both of them, they are in fact exactly the same. They are, in fact, exactly the same. It's wonderful. So what we found up here, we have verified doing these two sides of the equation separately, the right side first here and the left side second, that they are, in fact, equal. So we've done a proof of Euler's formula. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, this is really fun for me. And subscribe if you enjoy these things. It would encourage me to do more of them. And uh, like and all that jazz. Ask if you have any questions. I have fun doing it. So good luck. And go learn about the universe.